Journalists and hackers have initiated a global movement to uncover the secrets of the world's organized crime, corrupt governments and dictators. Reporters and uh, programmers have grouped themselves in cross-border networks where they exchange information, they mine databases and they process large volumes of data. This collaboration sheds light for the first time on corrupt business deals that affect the lives of billions. The era of impunity in looting public money is over. Journalists and hackers are now able to track down complex and hidden corrupt financial transactions that go across many borders. Invisible threads connect dictators in Africa or the former Soviet Union to lawyers and businesses in Switzerland, Panama and uh, many other offshore havens. Criminals use uh, very complex uh, business structures. They uh, set up uh, companies in uh, different countries around the world. Uh, it kind of uh, resembles to Matryoshka, which is a Russian uh, folding doll. Uh, they set up one company, for example, in the uh, Netherlands, then that company establishes another one in uh, Cyprus, then they, uh, that Cyprus company established one, uh, establishes another one in Belize, and that's where, where is a dead end, because those are the countries uh, where uh, records are not accessible. Uh, even authorities uh, who register company have no idea who is really a person or company behind uh, the, the the company registered at that destination. So uh, finding uh, who the beneficial owners is, is almost impossible in many, many, in most of the cases. Azeri journalist Khadija Ismailova has been trying for many years to bring such secrets to light. She investigated corruption cases involving the highest ranks in the Azeri government and the family of uh, Ilham Aliyev, the Azeri president. Many of her efforts hit a wall because of uh, Azerbaijan's culture of secrecy. She suspected a lot was going on behind closed doors, but was not able to prove it. But then I decided to look for other names, including the most popular last name in our country, Aliyevas. These are two daughters of the president and wife of the president. So I looked for Arzu Aliva, the youngest daughter of uh, our president, and I saw names of 12 companies. I decided to uh, search for these companies uh, in my own documents and then in uh, Google. When I was looking for Gladwin Management, uh, one of these companies, uh, a story popped out, a story that was, uh, that I was digging for, actually never published, never uh, done story, that, that I was investigating three years ago, in 2008. It was about ownership of Azerphone, one of the mobile operators, and uh, I found out that the government was lying to everyone, saying that Siemens is an owner of the company, uh, German Siemens company is an owner of a uh, mobile operator in Azerbaijan, and Siemens didn't have anything to do with that company. So Siemens had no stake in that company. And I got confirmation from Siemens that they have no stake in the company, and it was uh, proving that the government is lying. Uh, and then I got uh, information from Texas Ministry that five companies in Panama, oh, sorry, three companies in Panama, uh, Azeri government and one British company are the owners of Azerphone. And then 75% of this company owned by three Panama companies. Uh, I didn't know anything about how to dig for companies in Panama then, so I forget, forgot about the story. I dropped it because I couldn't follow the money to the end. 
Panama has been for many decades one of the offshore havens of choice for dictators and organized crime. It is here in the Caribbean Sea that they hide their money, their secrets and their corruption. Dan O'Huigin, a Scottish programmer, scraped the official registry of companies of Panama and built a web interface that allows name-based searches. It is here that Khadija Ismailova searched for the name of Aliyev, the Azeri president, and came across no less than 10 companies run by Aliyev's daughters and wife in uh, Panama. Hiding behind these companies, the Aliyevs secretly own important business assets back in Azerbaijan. Whenever you look up for the presidential family, you always find like dozens of companies. It's amazing, those companies are all over the place. In her investigative work, Khadija makes use of the investigative dashboard, an online platform that enables journalists to follow the money across borders. The investigative dashboard, or ID, is a portal towards business registries worldwide, official and uh, hacker-generated databases, as well as a research desk at the disposal of uh, investigative reporters who need assistance in tracking down companies worldwide. It's uh, one single place where you can find uh, hundreds of databases with company records, uh, people records in uh, uh, almost all of the countries in the world. It's very easily accessible. It also has uh, tools and uh, tutorials to help other reporters uh, get access, uh, learn how to access data. So I entered investigative dashboard and went to in, uh, worldwide company data. Uh, they have a great tool here uh, allowing you to see companies worldwide. Well, the, the biggest reporters face is that they think that uh, looking across the border from their country is uh, something that's impossible to do. Uh, they stop and they, uh, they stop their investigation and they feel that they have reached their limit. Uh, the role of ID is first to show them that uh, they shouldn't stop, that there is something across the border which, is gonna be, which can be a major revelation for their story. And second is, uh, it's easy. You know, once you know how to do it, it's super easy to do it. So what I did in when I found out that Arzu Aliva owns those Panama companies, I uh, wrote again to Siemens to confirm that again that they don't have stake in uh, Azerphone. Uh, sent a letter to Minister of Communication to again asking them who owns Azerphone and then again responded me that Azerphone Azerphone is being owned by Siemens AG German company I sent a letter to the president to ask him about his daughter's ownership of uh, the company they never responded here you see the poster of NAR Mobile, which is a product for, of Azerphone. It's the number three company in mobile, uh, op, uh, among mobile operators in Azerbaijan. And uh, the company came here and acquired the license without any tender. And then it acquired license for 3G services without any tender. And Ministry of Communication still doesn't give license to any second company. So this NAR mobile uh, other phone is the sole provider and monopolist for 3G services in Azerbaijan. And they control a uh, big part of the mobile internet, uh, which is uh, you don't feel uh, secure enough in internet when it's being controlled by the president's family. So it's part of the internet freedom issue as well. It's kind of uh, nice that women have business in the in this country. Women own the big businesses in the country. It's just pity that all of them. Uh, happen to be members of the president family and one of them 
is member of parliament, she's not supposed to have business. But this other form story, what impact it had. Uh, after we published the story, uh, Minister of Communication announced that it is ready to give uh, 3G license to competitors of other phone if they reduce their prices. So it was first time when the Ministry announced clear condition for having a 3G license. At the same time when Khadija Ismailova was investigating the secret fortune of the Aliyev family, thousands of miles away in Egypt, North Africa, two local investigative reporters started looking, again with the help of the investigative dashboard, for the money of the former Egyptian dictator Hosni Mubarak. The Arab Spring brought freedom in Egypt so that Ali Zalat and uh, Abdel Rahman Chalabi were able to investigate the secret businesses of the former regime. Public money has for a long time been misused and stashed away by Mubarak's cronies. The two journalists embarked on an electronic investigative journey that led them through databases in Switzerland, Panama, British Virgin Islands and other countries. But we had a very big problem that we don't have data, we don't have any way and any right way to get access to the data in Egypt. The good thing that we found that most of them are sending their money abroad, outside Egypt. So when you get outside, uh, because you know, like Switzerland and Britain, it's a democratic country, so uh, also they respect the freedom of uh, journalism, freedom of information, free information. So uh, every information we asked uh, and we were searching on, we found it easy. Hussein Salem, Mubarak's moneyman, built an extensive business empire made of companies in Switzerland, in uh, Romania, Spain, and the offshore havens of uh, British Virgin Islands and Panama. After Hussein Mubarak became the president, uh, he worked in the field of uh, petrol, many sectors, petrol, business, uh, also petroleum industries and uh, importing gas to Israel. He had exclusively the, the contract to import uh, gas to Israel. Uh, also, the big business for him was in the tourism. Uh, he has a very good brand called Julieville. It's a worldwide uh, brand of uh, uh, hotels, five stars, seven stars hotels. Uh, I think it's around twenty to thirty hotels all around the world. Uh, the revolution, Egyptian uh, revolution, was on twenty fifth of January. The next day, he got his aircraft and went to Dubai. And it was and the regime of the UAE government uh, give it, and they have given him a chance to get out to, uh, to Spain because he, he, he carries his uh, Spain passport. And when he went to Spain, uh, he was arrested in Spain. Uh, we have got a very good uh, aid and uh, they helped us investigative dashboard and we get uh, any very good information that how we can as journalists to get access in the databases. Abdel and Ali came with a very simple request. They told that Hussein Salem has a company in Switzerland uh, and uh, we have only had a name and no background on the person. So we went and looked up the Swiss records and fortunately we used the LexisNexis which allows you to do searches by name which is something that you cannot do in, uh, with the Swiss business records. After we um, found the name of the company it was easy, we went to the Swiss uh, business registry found uh, found the other companies. We also looked up some other names that appeared, names of his directors, proxy. We look up, looked up some of the addresses and, and the many of the uh, other companies that turned out to be owned by him were also registered on the same address. Uh, they also needed some help with the British Virgin Islands. 
so that's another uh, way we helped them. We went and uh, requested the records from BVI. Uh, the records showed that Hussein Salem was behind a uh, major oil deal between uh, Egypt and Israel. Uh, we started to, to, to search in uh, open sources like uh, the Money House, Company House, uh, Zifix and this thing. Websites and we found uh, very good information. Uh, it was a treasure of information. It was very helpful for for us, uh, especially that in Egypt it's very hard to to get uh, evidences and documents that prove that there's something uh, illegal. But outside, uh, I mean, abroad everything was written. So we found uh, uh, the hierarchy uh, of. Uh, his companies. Now the Egyptian courts, uh, they are depending on our investigation report uh, to give more evidence that this guy was doing something illegal. Together with uh, Hussein Salem, the Spanish authorities arrested another man who was considered a proxy for Salem's businesses. This man, Ali Sen, led the Egyptian journalists back to the Panama database of companies. Their searches revealed that uh, right before he was arrested, Salem has secretly transferred one of his Panama registered companies to two Azeri businessmen. At this point, Khadija Ismailova stepped back in and continued the investigation in Azerbaijan. She discovered car making factories, hotels, and shopping malls owned by this group of people. Hussein Salem, uh, uh, his children were the owners of a company in Panama. Uh, at the time, uh, that, uh, around the time that he was arrested in Spain, uh, they changed the ownership in uh, Panama uh, to two Azeri guys. Uh, Hatija did a wonderful work uh, looking into them and then what turns out to be is that uh, those people were working for a business partner of Hussein Salem in Azerbaijan in a company and it proved the link that the transfer of ownership in Panama was just uh, in paper but it wasn't a real transfer and that actually people who took over the ownership were the people who were part of the same group which was doing a business all around the world. Reporters in two countries Egypt and Azerbaijan were working on a separate, what they thought was a separate story. One was looking into Hussein Salem, the other was looking into two Azeri guys owning a business with the Turk. Uh, ID helped them create the network and find a f and put the final piece of puzzle, which was the Panama. A uh, deal that seemed to have nothing to do proved to be important for Egypt and Azerbaijan and show that the same people in different countries were connected and involved in the same deal. Khadija helped the Egyptian reporters to follow the money across borders. Their efforts were joined by Romanian investigative journalists who tracked Salem's wealth in Romania. It was only through the collaborative effort of uh, investigative reporters and hackers that transnational corruption at this scale was disclosed and presented to the public and the authorities. ID is, uh, has already become a central point for the cross-border investigations. Uh, it is, uh, people use it as a reference and, and first place they go to when they need to check something that's happening abroad. I think a major role of ID was to uh, change the minds of people, to encourage them not to uh, stop in their work, but actually follow through and try to go all the way to the end, because the end is something that's possible. Never give up. Always try everything you can, because there is always a way to find some information. Uh, maybe not this moment, maybe not the next month, but in a year and so in a country that you don't expect information is going to be available, it's going to turn out. So don't give up. You're going down. This is your